So, uh, so I'm George, my name is George Stavropoulos, and today I'll be discussing with you evolving cities. I want to start it off with a question, and this question is, you know, what do cities mean to you? You know, to me, it's where millions of people call home. It's where two-thirds of the population live. It's also where, you know, people can't imagine living anywhere else. So with this, I want you to take away something really key. And that thing is mainly I want you to look around the city around us, New York City, and how is it changing? How is it going to solve these problems that we have today? So there are three ben key benefits, I should say, of a city. One is it molds its citizens. And you, you might ask, how does it mold its citizens? And that is by basically teaching them how to act, how to uh, talk to people, and how to learn. You know, the late Senator Moynihan, before he was Senator of New York, he was a, man, he was a boy who grew up in New York City, in Hell's Kitchen. And it was a really influential story that came out of this book called The Nature of Urban Design. I really encourage you to read it. And basically, he grew up shining shoes on the steps of the New York Public Library. And those steps taught him, you know, things to make this, ways to make the city ten times better with its increasing population. There are countless opportunities, and you might ask how. Jobs, infrastructure plans, you know, tech businesses, everything. And that is due to four million people a year coming to the cities the size of Paris, Shanghai, Tokyo, and New York. So with this increasing population, it's ever improving. Because cities actually have the best living standards in the world. And, you know, it started off with the walls of Constantinople and Istanbul and the walls of Jerusalem. These were ways of defense against the enemies, and now it has transformed into, in those same walls, you have telephone wires, cable lines, high-speed internet, government buildings. You have a myriad of things which can help run a nation today. But like all great things, there are some problems that we need to face. In previous years, like I just stated, it was defense. And those defenses were addressed by walls. Nowadays, the problems are a bit different. The, problem, the problems are an increasing amount of technology. And with these 4 million people a year, our use of gigawatts went from 52,000 in 2015 to about 53,000. That's over 1,000 in a year. And that is really attributed to the increasing population of these cities. Because, you know, 50, 60 years ago, you didn't have computers. You didn't have iPads. You didn't have phones. You didn't have three TVs, two cable boxes, an Apple TV. You would have one TV, a stereo, a record player, and a radio. And maybe, if you're lucky, a toaster oven. So with that increasing amount of technology, there, it causes a bunch of problems. And those are natural disasters. Natural disasters really displace people. They can ruin people's lives, make them start from scratch again. And we are facing the biggest problem not due to other cities or other countries. It's due to our own faults. So we have to create a city that's more sustainable. So you have things like this that do not happen anymore. You don't have earthquakes knocking down buildings. You really have to have these solutions, which are resilient cities. And, you know, resilient cities really come from three key components. Sustainability. So I must mention that, you know, you, don't, you think of the city as more of you know, the New York City boroughs, let's just say. And we can't neglect, say, Westchester, the Rockaways and whatnot, because they have key jobs. People with jobs actually come into the city every single day just to work. So we have to figure out how to make our suburbs sustainable. 
first. So I propose, I've seen a number of proposals, I should say, a number of prototypes named by the Department of Transportation, and it is called solar roadways. It's extremely beneficial in suburbs because all the useless pieces of tarmac that line our nation today will actually turn to individual solar panels and LED lights. These are key because it can basically make our nation sustainable not on gas and old fossil fuels, but on renewable energy that basically bakes in the sun every single day. And also, we need to have solar panels. Solar panels on buildings are actually coming up a lot more now. In the United States, for instance, this picture is taken in Colorado. There's also one in San Jose, and there are actually permits being permitted here in this city now. But there's also one entire city run in the UAE by, um, by MIT and the government in the UAE, and it runs completely off of renewable energy. Granted, we can't forget it's in a desert, so it's different, but here you have, you know, in, especially in this city, you have buildings that are greater than 50 stories high. You have buildings that span high up across, um, above the clouds that can easily create its own electricity. And on top of this, we have to create buildings like what they did in the Midwest. In the Midwest, essentially, they made homes that can withstand or help withstand um, earthquakes and whatnot. And it's extremely beneficial. I'm sorry, not earthquakes. I should say more um, tornadoes, and it can equalize the forces of the tornado. So we need to make our cities like that. We have to have solar panels. These are all things that are actually being in production currently or being tested, and they're key in how we should make our cities nowadays. So I really pledge the people of my generation, men and women of my generation, to think about these issues because it all relies upon us. It relies upon us because we have to view the problems today, address them currently, quickly, and we also have to address the problems of tomorrow before they occur. Thank you.